Well, traditionally in, in the, the discipline of ecology, um, peatlands are dealt with by terrestrial ecologists and uh, mangroves are dealt with by, by oceanographers. Um, and so the mangroves are sort of seen as part of the ocean ecosystem, whereas the, the peat is seen as part of the terrestrial ecosystem. So the, often these groups don't talk to each other and they, have, uh, um, they don't often realize where they have some, some, some things to learn from each other. So, so I think the, the fact that um, we're able to bring them together is a really important part of this because it, it's an opportunity for, for folks from similar but, but often di distinct disciplines to share ideas, to, to share knowledge, to un begin to understand where they have some, some, some similar understanding, where they have some gaps, and, and where, they can, where different techniques and different ways of working in these ecosystems can complement what's being done by, by the other group. So I think that's a really important part of the, what we're trying to accomplish here is bring these two communities together. And carbon is really the part, that's, the, the thing that's uni uniting us. You know, the, the mangroves are the, the most carbon rich ecosystem in, in uh, marine ecosystems of, of all the marine ecosystems that exist. And, and peatlands among the, the ter terrestrial ecosystems is the most carbon rich. Yeah, I guess the, the big new findings is that we've, we've worked in both peatland ecosystems and in mangrove ecosystems to quantify the amounts of carbon that, that exist in sediments and in the peat soils. Um, and these numbers that we've come out with in the past uh, six months are much, much larger than we anticipated they would be. Um, so, so it's important to, to show uh, to the rest of the world at a time where carbon is, is a big issue because of the climate change issues, just how much of a, a sink these are, these, these are, how much carbon they store because these ecosystems are, are the fastest changing ecosystems in the world, you know, the, the, the peat de degradation and, and harvesting on peat and, and the disappearance of peat forests, the disappearance of mangrove forests are the highest of all forest types in the world and these are the most carbon dense. So to get that message out there at a time where the world is paying attention to, to carbon helps make the science more pertinent to, to what's happening in larger society. Ecosystems ecologists knew that these ecosystems had large carbon stores. I think the, the, um, what we see happening in, in say, the policy arena, the, you know, these, these soils and, and these types of ecosystems have been largely ignored. If we look at the methods that IPCC has put together, for example, they don't have appropriate methods for these ecosystems. Um, the, the policy community is only now waking up to how important uh, these ecosystems are with respect to greenhouse gas emissions. They're left out of most national uh, assessments of greenhouse gas emissions. So, so there's a, there is a new awareness. It, it was, it's an awareness that was maybe held within the scientific community. It's now coming to, to broader public awareness. And in particular, it's be, the, the policy community is becoming much more aware of just how important these ecosystems are. So we're seeing you know, scientific agencies making, these, making funding research in these types of ecosystems a priority. We're seeing policymakers coming to the science community and saying, you know, we need your information, we need your data. You know, as soon as you have it, let us know. So we're seeing a lot of interest coming from a lot of areas that traditionally weren't particularly interested in, in, in these ecosystems.